Hi friends, it's Monica and today I'm going to be sharing some TV shows I have recently watched this year. So this is a different video from my usual bookish content and I'm really excited to make it since I am also a TV show fanatic and I'm curious about how my TV show tastes may differ from my book tastes in terms of genre and stuff like that. These shows are in no particular order, so let's just get to the first one. So first up, we have Love is Blind season two. So this reality TV show is so addicting. So if you haven't heard of it, but I'm pretty sure you have, there is one group of men and then another group of women and they're all looking to get married. The social experiment aspect of this show is that's what they label it as, as a social experiment is that each person on the show is essentially dating every other person but all the dating and even the proposals that are done is through a glass wall so essentially you're not focused on the physical appearance of the person but you're focused on building up that emotional connection with that person in season one this show did work for a few couples and in season two, it did work for another few couples. It's either a hit or miss for these people in the show. Season two itself had some interesting characters, I would say. And it seemed there were a lot more diversity in the cast itself. And I think this one was set in Chicago. I forgot where season one was set. In Texas, I think, was season one. But with any reality TV show, there's going to be drama and there's a bunch of drama on this show. And it's a bit, it's a bit messy. <laughs> but personally, I eat that kind of stuff up and I did binge watch it. So all I'll say is Deepti made the right choice and she deserves all the best in the world. So in this case of this reality dating show, it does work in some cases, but it really depends on if you find the right person. And I love Lauren and Cameron from season one. And I think they were like the staple couple that everyone refers back to. I really can't wait to see season three of the show. This next show is a sci-fi and I do tend to consume more TV shows than books in the genre, which is a little bit strange, but I think that's more of my pattern. I watched a newer version of Lost in Space that came out in 2018 and all three seasons were on Netflix. It was super engaging and it kept me on the edge of my seat and wanting to find out what happens next to all the characters that we follow. We're following the Robinson family who are a group of space colonists. But after an alien attack, this family spaceship is separated from the rest of their colony and this happened on the way to a new habitable planet, Alpha Centauri. And yes, there are aliens in this show, which is what I want in a space show. And the CGI on these robot aliens was so well done, it's really creepy. And we also get to witness a really strong bond between one space alien and with the youngest Robinson, Will. The Robinsons include the parents, Maureen and John, and then the three children, Judy, Penny, and Will. So they're all stuck on a planet together and essentially stranded from the rest of their uh, colony. Now with this family, you do want to see them all succeed and survive this. It's really fun to watch their journey through space and it makes you feel like you're a part of their family going along through all their problems and struggles and just trying to get back to their main mission and as a family you do bicker or fight a lot but they still care for each other and with alien robots hunting you you kind of have to work together there is that suspension of disbelief that you have to keep in mind with there being a bunch of habitable planets out there that you can easily like breathe oxygen and drink water but i digress and i think in the show they have unlocked the ability to space jump i think it's called so they do jump from like one point in the galaxy to another point in the another galaxy so i really like that as well i highly recommend lost in space if you are looking for a show that has alien robots space travel and a caring for a family that's just going through it all so next i watch season two of emily in paris as also on Netflix. This was really fun to watch for me. Um, I think it's like a comedy drama. Although from season one to season two, I'm glad that Netflix actually made some changes to the show that they had. Their French actors actually speak French and not every single person speaking English. 
So there are some improvements to the show, but again, it's I think with the show it's kind of satire in a way. But you know, there was uh, some backlash against Emily in Paris. So this show is about Emily who is from Chicago and she has this opportunity to work at her company's marketing firm that is then set in France. So she moves to France and she's there for a year. We're following Emily who's trying to navigate her new life abroad and try to learn of a new culture, her new workplace, as well as her complicated love life. Season 2 was a continuation of questionable choices for Emily that she makes in the show. She has a unique fashion sense. It's really bright and colorful, but the storylines themselves are addicting and the characters also are not perfect. Emily herself can be unlikable, but you keep in mind that she is not perfect and I do like how the show emphasizes that her character herself is imperfect and just remember that don't idealize what you see on the show for what it is. Considering that season one of Emily in Paris did use a lot of stereotypes of the French people, I would keep that in mind if you are interested in watching this show or just you just skip over it. And I think there's a lot of good commentary online about why this show has a lot of issues. It did gather a lot of attention because of that and as well as like the wild antics that Emily goes through. But overall, it was fun to watch as a TV show. This next show is really near and dear to my heart because of the unique cinematography, music, soundtrack, action, and all the actors being so talented in this show. And I'm talking about Peaky Blinders and I recently watched season 6 which was the last season of this show and that made me really sad. I do think there is a movie coming out to wrap up any loose ends that didn't get wrapped up in this final season. It was a bittersweet ending because it's like finally we get to see the conclusion of all these storylines and all these characters that we've been following for a while now. And I know I'm going to miss watching this show, but I think th it never hurts to rewatch some things. If you don't know anything about this show, it's a historical fiction show and it's set after World War I in 1919. And we're following the Shelby family who runs the Peaky Blinders gang in Birmingham, England. The show mainly focuses on Tommy Shelby who is the gang leader of the Peaky Blinders and his plans to expand their power. I won't say too much about the show because it's better if you just watch it yourself. But in season 6, we do see how each storyline comes to an end and how the instability of events can happen in your life and how that disrupts each character's life in this season and we see how everything becomes wrapped up. It was amazing overall as per usual of the show and if you're wanting to watch the show, do keep in mind that some parts of this show is quite graphic in terms of the violence. This next show I did make a reaction series out of and it was season 1 of Shadow and Bone. If you have not yet watched my reaction series to this show, I will link the playlist up above and I reacted to each episode. And I think I will continue my reaction videos to this particular show because I think I just know more about this show in general. But this book to TV show adaptation was really well balanced from the bookish content translated to the TV show. We do see new storylines being created and which was really fun to see the Six of Crows characters interact with Shadow and Bone characters. Also in general, I did really love the casting of the characters as well as the CGI or VFX effects on the show and the music soundtrack was also really nice and I'm really looking forward to season 2 of this show. So switching gears a little bit, I'm going to be talking about a little survival show and this one has been popular recently and it's The Wild Season 2. So this show, it's about a group of teenagers who are on a plane ride but then their plane crashes and they are now stranded on a deserted island. However, they don't realize that they are part of a larger experiment. Season 1 was about describing what this experiment is about and witnessing how the group of girls survive on this island. Season 2, we do see more of the survival aspect and we have more characters as well. Season 2 did feel somewhat repetitive of season 1, but we did get more development of the characters that we already know and also witnessing how relationships developed up or broke down. I would really like to see the show more focused on the aftermath of the experiment and following the characters 
going back to their real lives. But it does seem the show is attaching to that survival genre a little bit longer. But it is really addictive and I do highly recommend it if you want some teen drama on a remote island type show. And another show that I binge watched and was super excited for was Bridgerton season 2. So Bridgerton is a historical fiction romance show and it's set in the Regency era and each season focuses on a new couple. But in season 2, the chemistry and buildup of Antony and Kate were next level for me and I was glued to the screen wanting to find out what happened next. I haven't read the Bridgerton books but I have read People commenting online how they changed quite a bit from um, Antony and Kate's storyline on the show and how there wasn't supposed to be a love triangle. However, there were some major plot points that made this some moments of the show kind of slow, but I think they are building up a lot of those storylines for future seasons. I think we will get the payoff later on. Although I already saw the news on Twitter that season 3 of Bridgerton is being focused on Penelope and Colin. So I'm interested to see how that will work out. Their love story. I do really like how on the show that they take modern songs and put a classical rendition in them for like the ball scenes and dancing scenes as well as for all the fashion that they have on the show. It's really pleasing to the eye to watch Bridgerton. And I really just like saying the word Bridgerton. <laughs> so this next show is from Disney Plus and it's Moon Knight. And I am a really huge fan of the MCU movies and TV shows, but I'm not too familiar with the comic books. Moon Knight was a really quirky superhero show. There was a lot of focus on the mental health aspect of the main character, Stephen Knight, who suffers from dissociative personality disorder. So that was interesting to watch and how that folds out. And what that personality disorder is having multiple personalities, and I think the mental health aspect of the show was portrayed okay, but it could have been a lot better. The plot itself, sometimes a little bit difficult for me to follow, and I needed to pay attention really a lot watching the show since there were new concepts of the superhero powers popping up on the show. And I really did like how we were set in Egypt, and we also saw some other nice settings in the show itself like the visuals were really nice to see and i think the plot was sometimes hard to follow because of stephen knight being an unreliable narrator but it was still like really top quality level of tv that i would expect from marvel one thing that i do dislike about all these new marvel tv shows that are coming out with the films is that it's a lot to keep up with like you get quite overwhelmed or rather I get quite overwhelmed needing to keep up with all the TV shows and then having that other payoff from the big feature films. It's a lot to keep up with but I'm gonna keep up with it because I'm a fan of Marvel and I don't want to fall behind. The last show I'm sharing with you today is another reality TV show and it is Selling Sunset season 5 and uh, this one was a messy one. It was a messy messy drama filled season. The concept of the show is set in LA and we're following a real estate agency or broker and all the real estate agents are women and we're also following their personal lives and a whole lot of office drama season five we have a lot of buildup of the office drama as i call it between christine and the other office ladies however i don't take reality tv shows quite seriously since some parts might be scripted and you won't even know so things that happen on the show some are real but i think not every single storyline is quote unquote real. And although there are some questionable personalities on this show, it does make for a good entertaining show to watch. I do like having an insider view into luxury real estate in LA and it's really fun to see those huge mansions that I will probably never have and I don't really want to be honest. It's just always fun to watch that type of real estate show and seeing how all these real estate agents navigate their complex personal lives. So those were all the TV shows I've watched recently and yeah, I do watch a lot of TV. I love TV shows, they're really fun and they do keep me entertained. 
in different ways from books and I always love finding new shows so if you have any recommendations for me you can leave them in the comments below and I'll check them out. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to give me a big thumbs up, hit that subscribe button down below, and ring that notification bell to not miss any future uploads. I'll see y'all soon.